Hello, I'm Becky Safe. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to do some Foley sound design. So Foley is where you get a recorder and you record ordinary sounds that you find in and around the environment in your home or out in the real world. This video is going to focus on turning those sounds using sound design processes and morphing them into instruments that you can use in your music. I'm going to show you how you can create your own basses, rises, drums and atmospheres. The timestamps are below in the description so you can skip to your favorite section. And as a special treat for this week's video, I'm going to invite you in to my own natural habitat so that you can get fully immersed in the creative process and see where I got the actual samples from. So let's get into it, shall we? Let's go. <laughs> <gasps> Sample that. I'm gonna sample the zip. I'm gonna sample the zip. Yeah. The first sound that we're going to make is a bass using a zip from a jacket. So I recorded the zip. You saw that. I'm going to edit that in. And we're going to use Granulator 2. So this is a Max for Live device and it splits your sound into grains. You drag and drop your sample into the window. So we're going to get the zip, drag and drop into the window. And now it's here and we can split the grains by increasing the grain size here. And you can see in the window that it makes it smaller or wider. And if you play on your keyboard, if we move the file position, we can hear the sample being played. The grain size is quite large at the moment, so if we increase the amount so that the grain size is a lot smaller and move the file position around, So we're looking for an area where there is some audio content that we can use and we're starting to shape it by increasing or decreasing the grain size. Smaller grain sizes are better because they give you a lot of that kind of repetitive texture, but too small can start to create some tonal information. And depending on what you're using your sample for, you might not want that tonal information. You might just want texture. Other aspects of Granulator 2 that you might want to look at are are the voices. We can turn this down to one. We can also scan. So scanning is going to scan either side of your grain size window that you have there. So you can increase the time and the curve. You could also activate the LFO and then you could increase the LFO on different parameters. You can see here on the grain, you've got LFO, you've got LFO on your file position. So if you increase the amount, this LFO here is going to now modulate the grain and the file position. And as we're doing a mid-range bass, you could increase the spread of the grain as well. So increase that. So we're starting to get some movement either side and some modulation around that window in the sampler. Now, if we go to the view area at the moment, we're on grain. If we click that, we now come into the filter section. Frequency modulation is really great on mid-range bases. So activate frequency modulation and increase the amount. So it's starting to sound a lot less like a zip and more like an electronic instrument. I'm going to play around with the settings in here a little bit more until I get something that I like. And then we're going to do some additive and subtractive synthesis. 
So now I have a sound that I really like in the granulator too with all the settings. I'm going to now do some multiband dynamics. So we're going to be looking at increasing the lower levels in the dynamic range because you can see there in the granulator and with this sample, we've got peaks where the zip comes up, but then we also have small bits of audio where it's a little bit quieter on the recording. And so the dynamic range is quite extreme. And with basses, we want a full fat sound where we don't have those extreme jumps in dynamics. So we're going to use multiband dynamics to bring up the lower levels so that they come more in line with those peaks. So activate multiband dynamics, take off the lows because we might be using a separate sub bass and we're doing a mid-range bass design here. And we're going to then go to the below option. So we're now increasing the dynamics on the below, the lower levels of the dynamics in this sample. We're going to bring the ratio up on both bands to one inf and then we're going to bring the amount up on the decibels so that it brings the dynamics right up. And now if we play it, it's got that grungy bass sound now. It's sounding a lot less like a zip. The next thing we're going to do is add some distortion. I'm using Rift from Minimal Audio. It's a third party plugin and this is Bipolar Distortion. It's in my recommended plugins linked below. So if you want to check it out, as well as all of the other plugins that I recommend that you get, this being one of them because it is sick and you will hear it in a moment. But if you don't have access to Rift and you just want to use Ableton stock plugins, Saturator, Overdrive, the amp, really great for adding extra crunch to your bass, but I'm going to activate Rift and you're going to hear it in all its glory. Lovely. So we have a real grungy mid-range bass and the next thing you want to do is do some subtractive synthesis using an auto filter just to bring out those harsher upper frequencies because we've added a lot into our bass sound. And you'll start to hear now as I move this frequency control up and down, if you automate this, this is where you're starting to get that movement, opening and closing of your bass and getting those nice textures that you might want to use over the top of a sub bass. <laughs> On top of the frequency and resonance automation there, I also activated the rate on the notes 1 over 8 of the LFO. So that's adding movement. Now you don't have to have that, but that just for me adds extra movement in this bass. <laughs> You can turn that off by bringing the amount down and now this is just a straight auto filter on the bass sound. Let's sample something else, shall we? Vacuum cleaner is the official term for that. So I sampled the vacuum cleaner and vacuums and anything that produces consistent noise is great because you can morph it and shape it into anything pretty much because it fills the entire frequency spectrum. And I have a more detailed video on how you can use noise to create lots of different things. Check my video above on all the wonderful things that you can make using noise. But now we're going to make a riser using the vacuum cleaner. So as you can see, it is consistent noise running throughout and the first thing we're going to do is just clean this up because on a riser we don't need the low end. So we're going to get an EQ8. So I've just done a high pass on the EQ8. I'm going to open it up because I did hear a tonal frequency so the vacuum cleaner was actually making a pitch and we're going to do a cut wherever that pitch is on the frequency spectrum. <laughs> and I can see it, it's here. I'm actually gonna drop this vacuum so that it's uh, just a little bit lower in pitch. Cool, so now that's gonna move that peak. So that peak is now here. So I'm gonna create a notch and we're just gonna 
Remove that. Cool, so it's not gone completely, but it has cleaned it up. The next thing we're going to do, and crucially when you're doing a riser with noise, is the bandpass sweep. So we're going to sweep through the frequency spectrum, and that's going to create the impression of an increase in frequency because we're isolating frequencies. So auto filter in Ableton, and we're going to come onto the bandpass. We're going to change the slope to a 12, and we're going to sweep across the frequency spectrum, and that's going to create that whooshing feeling. We're going to automate the frequency and the resonance. So press the A key and we're going to click on frequency and we're going to create a slope. Not all the way up to 20,000 hertz, maybe up to around six. And then we're going to bend that using the Alt or Option key. That's on the frequency. On the resonance, we're going to do the same. We're going to create an exponential curve so that it increases more rapidly as we get towards the end of the file. But we're not going to do a resonance boost all the way up because that's going to be quite piercing to the listener. So we're going to bring that down and we're going to bend. You can hear how it seemingly is increasing in pitch, but it actually isn't. You're just isolating those frequencies, but it still sounds like a vacuum cleaner. So we're going to use time-based effects like phases and reverbs to kind of mush those frequencies together. So I've added into the chain a compressor, a phaser and a reverb. I'm going to bring the phaser amount down and I'm going to bring the rate to one. And with the phaser and the reverb, I'm going to automate the dry wet. So so that they fill more of the space, especially as the auto filter reaches those upper frequencies. So now that they're automated, let's have a listen. Finally, you might want to use Ableton's frequency shifter on ring modulation mode. So activate ring and then we press the A key, click on the frequency and then bring it down to the bottom, drag up. And now you'll hear this kind of beating, which is quite common with risers. Sounding a lot more like a riser than a vacuum cleaner. Next on the list, super easy to do is to isolate a tonal frequency so you can use it either as a kick or a snare drum. I do also have a more comprehensive video on DMB snare sound design so you can check that in the link above if you want to learn more about how to create your own snare drums. But this is going to be creating the fundamental or tonal frequency of the drum and you can use this method to create kick drums as well but I'm just going to show you how to do a snare. So we have the pan, the sound that I recorded from hitting the pan and I'm just going to isolate that so we get a little fade on there as well. Um, so yeah, so this is the pan. So you can hear it sounds like hitting a pan. What we're going to do is we're going to get an EQ8 and we're going to isolate the tonal frequency and for a snare drum it kind of hovers around 200 hertz. So let's open up the EQ8 and find where the main tonal frequency of me hitting this pan is sitting. So around here. So yeah, so that's about 200, it's 230 hertz. So now we can start to shape this using the EQ8. And we're gonna use some hard curves, so four times slope on both the upper and the lower frequencies. Mm -hmm. 
Cool. So we have the isolated frequency there, but we also have a kind of reverberated double frequency. If you listen, there is another frequency that just comes straight after it. And we don't want that. So we could just get rid of that by shortening this sound. So now we just have probably a bit too short. Cool, so that's the sound that we're looking for, that single tonal frequency that's going to make up the main body of the snare drum. We could add some saturation using Ableton's saturator, just increase the drive. And now we can go ahead and layer this drum. So I'm gonna layer it with an acoustic drum from a sample pack, just making sure that the initial frequencies are not clashing and now let's blend the two sounds together and we'll have a listen and see if this sounds like a full-bodied snare drum. And the tonal part could actually be shortened a little bit more because a lot of the acoustic sound is coming from the snare layer. And you can hear there how you're getting the body and you're getting the acoustic layer of the snare. And that's how you can turn a tonal found sound into a tonal drum. Remember to check that video on my channel if you want to learn more about snare sound design and synthesis. But let's go into the next one. If you're enjoying and you're liking this video so far, please consider hitting the like and the subscribe button and dropping a comment below to let me know what you thought about the video. It all helps with the YouTube algorithm and it helps me get connected with who's watching my videos and I'd love to hear from you. So please hit the like button and drop a comment below and say hello, hiya, you all right? So once again, we're back onto using noise and this time we're taking it from a hairdryer. And remember noise is just anything consistent that fills the full frequency spectrum but this time we're going to make a hi-hat so we're back into Ableton and we're using the sampler I'm going to drag and drop the hairdryer into the sampler and now we're going to just take a small snapshot a small section we have some MIDI notes in there so we can play this <laughs> Cool, so it, it sounds like noise still, but all you need to do for a hi-hat, it's super easy to do. You just need to shape the amp envelope. To get to that, you go to Filter and Global, and here is your global ADSR settings, and you just need to bring down the sustain and bring the release in. We're gonna go onto a high-pass filter, and we're gonna change the voices to one and let's just increase the volume so you can hear it. And then we'll add some overdrive just so that it pushes up the frequencies. And that is your hi-hat. It's so easy to make from noise and you can play around with the decay to open and close that noise sound to create some really interesting textures. Keep it set in one place and you have yourself your own hi-hat. Finally onto your atmospheres and we're going back into my favorite Max for Live device, Granulator 2. It's genius. I love it. I just love granular synthesis and we're back into Granulator 2. Yes. 
happy place. And I'm just going to walk you through what I've done with the granulator and a few of the other plugins as well, using similar processes that we've already covered in the video. That's why I'm not walking you through. But I dragged and dropped the sample into granulator two, played around with the settings. This time the grain size is really small because those smaller grain sizes are going to create those tonal textures. I've also added the MIDI effect, the fifth chord. So now when I press down on one key, it's going to play the fifth at the same time as well. Then we've used the multiband dynamics technique again, where we're pushing up the below dynamics. So we're increasing them right up using that one to inf ratio sandwiched nicely together. We're creating an atmosphere here. We want it to be consistently smooth across the dynamic range. And then the next part is using a reverb. So we're washing the space with the atmosphere. Let's have a listen to what this sounds like. It's very, uh, trippy out there. And from that, you can hear how there is a lot of tonal information in there. So make sure you check your key of your track so that you're matching that tonal information with your music. And that's just a few ways that you can take found sounds, recorded Foley from wherever you are in the world and turn them into your own instruments, making it unique to your music. I hope you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. Please consider giving it a like, commenting and subscribing to the channel. And if you are new to Ableton Live, please check out my courses below so that you can fast track your learning and master Ableton quicker than if you were trawling through the YouTube videos online. My name's Becky Safe. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, I will see you for another video. Bye.